All right, Mac Jocks, have I got a video for you today? Yes, I do. It is going to be a ranking of the Medium Omni Max that were originally debuted in Technical Readout 3050. I thought I would start out, I'm going to hopefully do all of the 3050 Clan Omni Max in a series of four videos. I thought I'd start with the mediums because I think that on average they're probably the best. Um, you know the assaults are good the heavies a lot of some of the some of the heavies are very good but some of the heavies are not so good the mediums are consistently good like pretty much every one of the medium mechs is one where it's got a pretty awesome battlefield role to fill and it does a good job at it i mean one of the things to say as kind of a preface to this is that the clans with their 3050 designs they really kind of set it up so that the medium mechs are kind of like you know just straight up better in almost every case than the light mechs right for every one of the light mechs um except like the dasher just because it's so fast there's a medium mech that's going to basically fill a similar role and do a better job at it and i'm going to only be rating the variants or the um the configurations of these mechs that were available in 3050. If people clamor for it, I could do a separate rating of the later variants. There certainly are some very good ones. Okay, so the Fenris or Ice Ferret. Uh, this is the one that I'm going to rate the lowest out of these mechs, although it's really not bad. I'll give it a B minus for a letter grade. The thing about the Fenris, you know, it it's definitely a nice, fast, ground-based mech. It could have been five tons lighter and been kind of better than it is. And a lot of the configurations focus on kind of like one big long-range weapon, which is not a super ideal way to arm an 812 mech, I think. But okay, let's get started to the meat of the thing. So for each variant or for each mech rather i'm going to give um i'm going to rank two or three configurations of it so i'm going to say which one i think is the best fighter overall which one i think is the best deal for the battle value which might be the same thing as the best fighter sometimes and then for some mechs i'll have an honorable mention if i think that there is a third uh, configuration that is worth a look for you best fighter for the ice ferret is the one that doesn't do that thing that i was just talking about about having a single big long-range weapon but instead jams the thing full of medium pulse lasers the clan medium pulse laser is just a super good weapon for a fast unit to carry and you know the the fenris d does an excellent job of being a vehicle for those medium pulse lasers it's not going to have heat problems, really. And in fact, it's kind of oversynced. Um, the anti-missile system is kind of unnecessary, as, as anti-missile systems often are. But it's not detracting from anything about the mech. You know, it would have been nice to have a couple of extra, like maybe ER small lasers or something instead. But what are you going to do? This mech will move fast, and it will hit reliably with a heavy-duty punch for sure. Remember. The thing you got to remember about clan medium lasers, they're basically inner sphere large, large lasers in terms of the damage they do. So they do a lot of damage. There's a couple of things that I would criticize about this mech still, which is the reason why I give the Fenris a B minus instead of an A range grade. I mean, one thing to criticize about the Fenris, the clan mediums, they do tend to have this problem in this period. There's a little too much rear armor. You know, this thing could have had 20 points of rear armor on the center, or excuse me, 20 points of front armor on the center torso. But instead they decided to give it eight points in the rear, which is like, why don't you just give it seven in the rear and 20 in the front? I mean, 20 points of armor, there's a big difference between 19 and 20 points in Battletech. Um, so that's a criticism I have of it. You know, kind of another problem with the mech is the battle value is a little high for what you get, which is true for, I would say, all of the Fenrises. And that's another reason why I don't rate the design that highly. 
you know, in my experience, you just don't see a lot of Fenrises in tournament play. And the reason for that is that it is not a BV efficient design. The best deal for battle value is the B configuration. You know, it's got some nice stuff. It has an ER large laser, which is definitely a nice weapon. And it's got the heat sinks to use it at close range as well. You know, so it's a 10 point hit that you start hitting with at long distance and you can still use in close. And then it has 10 SRMs and clan SRMs are extremely efficient weapons. You know, they're, they're the same as inner sphere SRMs in terms of their effect. So this thing packs the punch of like a commando, except that you have that large laser instead of a medium laser, right? And then it's got this small pulse laser for anti-infantry. It's cheap compared with other decent Fenrises. So I think this is a fine design. It's not cheap enough. It's not effective enough for your BV that I would really necessarily play it in a tournament game if I was like trying to win, but it's definitely playable. Okay, the Nova or the Blackhawk. Now we're getting into stuff that is legitimately good and there are some legit good variants of this mech. 585, so it has a classic medium mech movement profile. That's a really nice thing about it. I love 585 as a, as a way for mechs to move, especially in the 50, 55 ton range. It, you know, it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna move uh, in an effective way. It'll, whatever its movement modes, it will be able to work up as much of a target movement modifier as it costs itself in attacker movement modifiers. So it's a very efficient mover. That's a nice thing about the mech. The armor is also pretty nice, although that extra half ton that it leaves off would have been very nice to have, honestly. But it's actually not that big a deal because it comes off of the legs and the legs do have 20 points on them. So really the mech is well armored. I would just criticize again why you gotta put so much, in this case, armor on the rear side torsos. Right, having the rear torsos have half as much armor as the front, you know, that's a lot. I mean, on the other hand, there is this dilemma when you're designing a, a 50 ton mech, right? You can either have five or more points in the rear torso, which you definitely want to have, or you can have 20 points in the front. So it's like a Scylla and Charybdis, right? You have a tough choice to make there. So I think the mech's armor setup is quite good. And you can see that for the best fighter, I've picked the Nova A. You know, this is just a killer long range cavalry mech. It has some short range capabilities as well with a medium pulse laser. And I was just talking, you know, clan medium pulse, always a good weapon. Not enough heat sinks, that's a problem. But I mean, you can, you can make it work, right? It's not so few heat sinks that you can't make this mech work. It's kind of like, you know, it's like a, a, a I've, I've compared it a lot to the Inner Sphere Falconer, and I think that's an accurate comparison. It has kind of a similar combination of speed and long range punch that's very nice. The best deal for the battle value with the Blackhawk is a mech that, mm, honestly, it's not that great, which is the Nova B. Large pulse laser, so the large pulse laser is awesome, right? Best weapon in the game. You know, no complaints there. Ultra AC5, hmm, not so awesome, okay? But it's fine, you know, it's like, you're not paying that much battle value for an Ultra AC5. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a very impressive weapon. And then it's got some short range stuff. You know, the ER small lasers, you know, that, that, that's a useful weapon, right? That does, that does as much damage as that Ultra AC5 will half the time. But, you know, overall, the fact that it packs a large pulse laser and it's not too expensive in terms of battle value makes it a pretty playable mech. And an honorable mention, you know, has to go to the Prime variant. All of those ER mediums, like I was just talking about, you know, clan medium lasers are like inner sphere large lasers. This thing hits like a ton of bricks. You know, it's not very heat efficient at all. And a thing that one has to complain about here is just so much battle value for what you get. So it's not a mech that I would take, again, necessarily into a tournament situation. But 
if you're just playing a game that's not balanced by battle value or it's a fairly casual game or something yeah this thing it's a beast don't get me wrong it's just maybe not the best deal for what you pay for it and now we're getting into some designs that I think are just extremely efficient extremely useful have a ton of you know incredible roles on the field the dragonfly or the viper right this is an a minus rated mech for me and you know i don't know maybe it should have been an a I, I just think this mech it's got some variants that are amazing it is for the clans a pretty unique design in this period because it has really the most amazing movement profile of any clan mech like i would pick a dragonfly's movement over a dasher's movement honestly because jumping eight is just unbelievable right it's so defensively powerful and it's so offensively powerful you can get this mech anywhere you need it to be the best fighter is the prime variant because it combines that jumping movement with medium pulse lasers so this is a mech that you're going to hit with pretty easily even after you have jumped into an enemy's rear arc again i have to complain a bit about how much extra armor is on the rear side torsos I would have put five points on those rear side torsos and 15 on the front, but you know, whatever. Other than that, there is very little to complain about with this mech. Again, it's got the useless, relatively useless anti-missile system that might protect you sometimes. Um, battle value wise, it's a, a it's 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 a good price for what you get. This is, you know, at 1450 battle value, I would pay that on this before I paid 1500 for that large pulse laser Blackhawk that we were just talking about. This is a nice mech. It's got pretty nice weapons. You know, the armor is real solid for how heavy it is. And especially combined with that speed, this is actually not a mech that will go down easy at all. It's gonna be hard for your opponents to kill. In a lot of games, they'll just give up on trying to kill this because they can't best deal for the battle value is the C variant. You know, this thing is a great deal. 1340 battle value. It's got two clan medium lasers. These are the ER ones, so not quite as amazing, but it's got a whole bunch of point blank range weapons, including three flamers. So, I mean, it could erase infantry, of course, but those are also really useful as crit seeking weapons against mechs and vehicles. This is a super nice mech. I took this in a tournament recently and I couldn't have been more pleased with how it performed. For the battle value, it's a really awesome deal. So is the prime variant, but this one I think is even a slightly better deal. An honorable mention goes to the A variant, which is the hardest hitting one in the sense that it's got the most kind of raw damage capability. It hits a little bit like a Blackhawk Prime, honestly. The heat sinks are light for what it's carrying, so you're gonna you're gonna be if you play this mech, you're gonna be riding the heat hot, right? You're gonna be putting a lot of heat on it one turn and jumping out of danger the next turn. That's how you would play it, kind of like a classic Phoenix Hawk is often played. Um, but yeah, in terms of offensive power, this is a mech that you should take seriously. Battle value wise, it's kind of expensive for what you get. So I would maybe play this mech in a campaign setting instead of in a setting where, you know, you're playing kind of pickup games balanced by BV. But in terms of how hard it hits, it's a real danger. The Rio Ken or Stormcrow, uh, named after Gandalf, perhaps, you know, it won't surprise you to see that this mech is rated an A. Every, I mean, almost every version of this mech just kicks butt. This is, a, this is a hardcore mech. This is a mech that has incredible high performance capabilities. And you're not going to go wrong picking one unless maybe you spend too much battle value on it. But you'll never be disappointed with how a Ryoken fights. Best fighter. You know, I've told you I like the medium pulse laser as a weapon for medium mechs if they move fast enough. Well, a Ryoken moves fast enough. It goes 6'9", so it's got good speed for a 55-tonner. And it's got four of these medium pulse lasers, um, so it's got nice offensive power. 
it looks like it's going to run a little hot at first, but it's actually not that bad because those streak SRMs are very heat efficient. You know, you only gain heat from them if they hit. So it's a mech where, yeah, it'll run a little hot if you absolutely hold the trigger down. But if you're a little careful about how you use your weapons, it's going to be pretty heat efficient. You know, it's, it's, about, it's about in the sweet spot where you can heat it up if you want to, if you want to have some extra offensive power. But if you don't heat it up, it'll fight just fine. Another thing I like about this variant, this, this configuration, is that the LRM-20 ammo is in the right arm. And so if it explodes, it's only going to blow off the right arm. That's real nice. And as a general observation about the Rio Ken, the armor is just solid, right? Again, I would have preferred a little more front armor and a little less rear armor, but only criticism. Other than that, this mech, it's a brick. For a 55 ton mech, this is an absolute brick. Now only a little bit less hard hitting, but 500 battle value less is the one that I'm counting as the best BV deal. That's the Stormcrow C. Great mech. Two medium pulse and a large pulse. Wow, those are some nice pulse lasers, right? You can put a regular, you know, that is inner sphere regular pilot on this thing, a four or five pilot, and they will hit a lot of targets. You know, it's gonna be easy to hit with this mech. And uh, the LB-10X is also really nice in that regard. You know, that weapon, when you're firing the cluster ammo it's easier to hit as well so this mech is really accurate it's got it's got a decent punch really solid punch two 10 point hits two seven point hits nothing wrong with that at all so this is a really efficient mech this is a mech that will be very effective on the field for you it's gonna do steady damage at pretty high rates and also look at where that ammo is all in the arm. Again, an ammo explosion is not going to blow off a side torso on this mech, which is great. If I were playing a Ryoken in a tournament, I would definitely take the Ryoken C. It's so efficient for how many battle value points you spend on it. It's, it's not cheap. It's not cheap, don't get me wrong, but it's still super duper good. And now an honorable mention goes to the B variant, which has you know, a right arm that is like the right arm of a Blackhawk Prime, and then the left arm has an Ultra AC-20. This thing packs a serious medium close range punch. You know, you get up close to it, you will die, no matter who you are. Not super cheap in terms of battle value, but affordable enough that you could play it, and it is dangerous, right? People will run away from this mech, and rightly so. So it's a really nice thing to have if you wanna have something that's, that's just a, an imposing threat to scare off enemies and just make them cautious. It's a great assault mech killer. You know, you can take down an Atlas with this thing, no problem if you play it right. It's an awesome mech, really, really deadly. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our journey uh, through the 3050 medium clan mechs and you know I'd love to hear your thoughts about any of these mechs any places that you might disagree with my rankings uh, but these are my thoughts that you know these are these are classic mechs they're all iconic now iconic parts of Battletech these were some of the mechs that I looked at that got me interested in the game when I was a teenager so you know if you haven't played with them you should and you should enjoy them they make great enemies uh, for a game master to use in a campaign against the clans, right? There's nothing more nail biting than playing a campaign game against the clans that's set in 3050. You know, it's terrifying facing the clans with inner sphere technology in that period. So these are mechs that are useful for all kinds of cool things you can do on the tabletop, and I highly recommend them.